Managers of Reddit, what was an excuse an employee gave that you thought was BS till you saw proof? One of my colleagues said he would be late because of heavy rains. It turned out that he was living in a flood prone zone and he showed up to office shirtless because it was wet and soiled by muddy water, with a video of his car floating and totaled on the road near his house. That's sad, poor guy. When I managed a convenience store, a guy who was there didn't complete all his closing tasks until about 1am, we closed at 11pm, it usually only took about 15 minutes. He said it got super busy and someone had diarrhea in the middle of the store he had to clean up. He was known in the past for being lazy and finishing his job and milking his time to get more hours and so I really thought he was just saying stuff as an excuse. Went back and watched the recording from the night before to be sure before I called him out though and I'm glad I did. You could clearly see about 20 people come about 10 minutes before closing. A dance or something in town was coming to an end. And one guy was leaving a stream of liquid poo around the store before running to the bathroom to try and clean himself up. That guy deserves a freaking raise. Guy was scheduled to come in for his first day. Got a flat tire on the freeway on the way in. Called in. Manager was cool and told him to take care of it and come in the next day. Next day rolls around and he calls in again. This time because his radiator overheated on the freeway. Even took a picture and texted it to management and HR. Manager. Still cool. Told him to come in the following Monday to give him time to get his car repaired. New employee is. Of course. Grateful as heck. Monday rolls around, and my manager gets another call. New guy was on his way and got into a car accident on the freeway. Manager got pee this time. New guy told him to look out the window, since our building was on a hill that overlooked a large stretch of freeway. Sure enough, off in the distance was new guy's car burning merrily away. Not a manager, but a co-worker showed up over an hour late because a goose was guarding my car door. He had a video on his phone. A Canadian goose, sitting in his driveway. Every time he'd approach the car it'd spread its wings, lower its head and begin charging at him honking. Hilarious as heck and totally worth the almost 2 hours of solo work. My best friend called out of work for what was essentially a bad sunburn once. We were working at a movie theater at the time, and because she wasn't sure if anyone would believe her she decided to drive up to show the managers. She has a super distinctive body shape. So when I saw her across the lobby I waved and she sort of waved back. A bit later she walked over to me and she was completely unrecognizable. Turns out that she actually had mild sun poisoning and her face was so swollen she looked like a different person. Her doctor wrote her a note because he didn't want her near the hot popcorn poppers or deep fryers. It took her almost a week to look anything like herself again. Best part was she used the super swollen sun poisoning picture of herself on tinder for the longest time. She used the super swollen sun poisoning picture of herself on tinder for the longest time. Amazing. 15 minutes before her shift is supposed to start I get a call from the employee saying she had just been in a fender bender but she was alright and would be at work in 45 minutes to an hour after getting the insurance info sorted. 45 minutes later I get another call. She wasn't going to make it work that day because her car had been hit by another driver and was totaled. I didn't believe her until I saw the pics of the three car sandwich with her car firmly squished in the middle. I had a similar sort of experience working at a Ren Faire one year. Other employee and I strike out to grab lunch. Do you in fact help a little old lady walk up the fairly uneven trail away. This takes us a while so we're about 10 minutes late to call. Boss's P. Demands to know where we were. Sorry, we were helping a little old lady cross the road. Boss is incredulous until one of the other performers pipes up. No, I saw them. They were literally helping a little old lady cross the road. A guy in my public speaking class stopped showing up for about a month. Suddenly he reappears and says he got jumped and was stabbed six times and that's why he missed class. Six times? He pulled up his shirt to show the group of people who had huddled to hear the story. It looked like a grenade had gone off with how fast the huddle of people took their bodies away from the site. Yeah, six times. I got stabbed five times, missed two weeks at university. Luckily I was stabbed at the university so everybody just knew it was me. I jumped up hit my head on the low ceiling, and had to go to the hospital. He showed me the stitches. At least he gave you a heads up. 
Guy I knew lost the tip of his big toe on a building site. Someone knocked over one of those large concrete slabs things they have. He was ringing his boss, who didn't believe him, so he's asked the ambulance driver to turn on the siren. Sounds like a funny ambulance ride. One of my team was off for a week holiday. Called up to say he'd fallen off a bed and broken his neck. Yup, neck brace, several weeks off work, rehabilitation. Remarkable how he was able to recover so quickly. Not manager but guy misses payment on his mortgage. Claims to have been kidnapped for X months. Being risk based peeps we were all skeptical till we saw the police report. I was temporarily fired from not showing up to work for a couple of days. I had been called up for jury duty and was selected for a court case so I filled out a time off request form and faxed it to my supervisor to approve. When I got to the office after finishing jury duty walked into my boss's office brandishing. 1. My jury summons. 2. The original time off request form in the fax sheet and 3. Paperwork from the court to prove I had reported for duty and served. He called my supervisor into his office and asked her about the time off request form. Turns out my idiot supervisor not only forgot to hand the form in but for the past couple of months, she had been carrying it around with her. Someone said they got a medical recommendation from the doctor for a sick leave, which legally will be giving them a paid day off. 4. Wait for it. Being drunk. Saw the medical shit too drunk and hung over to work. Called up the clinic. Drove all the way to check out if the thing exists. Bravo. Bravo. In all fairness, he could have gone to the clinic for treating his alcoholism. Had an employee that took bereavement time because his mother passed away. Okay it happens. 4 or 5 months later he took bereavement time because his mother died. I was like WTF. He tells me he was adopted. His birth mother had just died. And the first one was his adoptive mother. Okay wow well, yeah fine. 6 months later he takes bereavement time because his mother died. I was like you're kidding me right? Nope his parents that adopted him divorced when he was 8. His father remarried when he was 12 and the new wife adopted him. Dang. That's rough. Was a manager at BK. Kid called in and said he had a bad reaction to some bath salts. I thought he meant actual bath salts, not the drugged bath salts. I bought some of the essential oil salts for the wife and some have made her irritated so I ran with it. He definitely meant the drugged bath salts because I caught him a week or so later busting out a line in the restaurant bathroom. Dude had a small mason jar full. Fired on the spot. His excuse was it was legal, and didn't think it would be an issue. Kid had some some balls to fess up to the corpse grinder. I know a guy who said he was kidnapped by terrorists in the Middle East on vacations. He had the police reports and everything. I had an employee call me saying he wouldn't be able to make it to work because he was in jail. HR called the jail. And sure enough he was charged with possession of a controlled substance and domestic abuse. He didn't work out. I had a guy no show one time. He called like an hour after he was supposed to be there. Saying that he blew three tires while on his way to work. Turns out, he saw a box in the road, and assumed it was empty. So he ran over it. It was a box of drywall screws. They scattered, blowing not only the tire he hit it with, but also both rear tires as well. Apparently lots of cars also picked up screws as they went around him, before a fire truck was able to get there and block off the two lanes. He showed me a photo of him and a cop, standing next to a row of like 15 parked cars, all with flat quickly deflating tires. And that's the story of how my idiot co-worker learned never to assume containers in the middle of the road are empty. I never run over boxes because I'm always scared there's an animal or even a child hiding inside. I shat myself on the train on the way in. I'm having to waddle home to shower and change. I'll be about an hour late. I didn't want to see the proof for that one. Better man than I. If I crap myself I'm taking the whole day off. Not a manager at the time but was working night shift at a bar and my co-worker had asked manager right before dinner rush to go home for feeling sick. Manager said I can't tell that you're sick if I can't see it then you are healthy enough to work. Well fast forward to 11pm or so and he's on line busting it for the mini rush we are facing and balam. Vomit in the entire line cooler. Gone. The entire freaking cooler. 
Needless to say he went home and the kitchen shut down. I always did like stories with a moral. Heart surgery on the Friday. ICD device fitted. In office Monday. Got called a bullshitter until I showed him the wound. I went to school a week early after my last heart surgery. And I walked pretty slow still. Some guy said I was faking. Shut that guy up fast. Had a guy call me 30 minutes before his shift started to tell me he was locked in his house and couldn't get out. When he finally came in he had a receipt from a locksmith and the old lock, which had had to be drilled out. One of my former employees was a beekeeper as a side job. She called it in one day and said she might not be able to come into work, but that she was coming in to show me why. She came in, and her right eye was very swollen. Turns out a bee had crawled up her nose and stung the inside of her nose. She wasn't very allergic to bees, but she ended up having a mild allergic reaction and had to go to the hospital. A bee had crawled up her nose. Thanks for the nightmare fuel. Never sleeping again now. Not a manager but actually me. Turns out that the first day after a 3 weeks vacations I fell off a bus in movement and suffered a lot of injuries on my right foot. My mom went to my job and delivered the medical suspension. After 6 months of recovery I returned to work. I could barely walk by myself and it was extremely painful still. First thing that my manager said when he saw me holy crap I thought you was bullshitting with the whole bus story just to extend your vacations. Crap man. I think that a 6 month suspension just to extend my vacations is quite extreme. Really good guy and employee just was made for working at night, always late, eventually gave him an ultimatum, if you are late one more time, I would have to cut him, literally next morning I get a video text from him of slow traffic on the interstate like at 3 miles per hour out his passenger window, he slowly rolls past a car on fire in the center lane. I just replied take your time. Bonus. We were both at a party 3 years later and I'm telling the story again to a bunch of people there. And he pulls out his phone and shows the same video illustrating the excuse. I might also just start keeping a video of a slow drive by a burning car on my phone for whenever I'm late somewhere. A frequent absentee rushed into my office without knocking. Saying he had to go home immediately because of not feeling well. This guy had used so many alibis to skip work. Even his workmates didn't trust him anymore. I stalled. Taking note of his abysmal work record. Bright eyes and healthy looking ruddy cheeks. And then decided to give him a stern lecture on workplace absenteeism. Until he projectile vomited all over my desk. Family photos. Budget reports and an open laptop. Trying to avoid that tsunami, I launched my chair backwards, smacking my head on a bookshelf. Through the stars, I could see chunky bits and stinking slime everywhere. I can only conclude it must have been a cold pizza breakfast, with a liter of cola. I know, some fakers can do that on demand, but I didn't bother to investigate. I suddenly had more pressing problems. Plus, I guess wide eyes and a ruddy complexion can be a bad sign too. I was the employee, I was at a client site doing some work when the building caught on fire, called my boss and it went like this, hey, it's going to be a lot longer than we thought the building is on fire, no, as in literal fire, it's not the firewall, we haven't installed it yet, like literal fire, with flames and heat and things, I'm just going to send you a picture, called in because he ate dog shit mixed with Aureus and was feeling sick. He recorded it on tape jackass style and gave copies away. That's management material right there. Had a staff member say she'd been in a car accident and couldn't work. We literally have this excuse every other week from our staff. I was not impressed. Turns out she was riding her bike to work and was hit by a car. She ended up in the IQ and the hospital called us as we were her next of kin. She ended up having a lot of surgery but recovered within a few months. I paid her a few weeks of pay so she didn't go too broke. She was a casual and not entitled to pay, until she got back on her feet. So, on at least one occasion a car accident has been true. NB people are blowing up my inbox about her using us as a next of kin. Don't worry guys. She is a foreign national in our country and her overseas family don't speak English. She also worked directly with me as a nanny for my daughter, so we were somewhat close. We have further emergency contacts for all our staff, 
so we could have made further contact, if necessary. She recovered from the IQ stay quickly. She's Japanese and hates to make a fuss about anything. I believe to her mind she was just being logical. She still works with us and is back with her clients, who were beside themselves with worry and who all sent her flowers. Very loosely qualifies but once I had to write a request to reset a uni midterm exam because a volcano volcano erupted and grounded all the planes in Europe. I was out of the country at the time. Not the manager, but the employee. I had requested my birthday off months in advance, but it wasn't approved, so I just sucked it up and cancelled my plans. About a week before my birthday a friend of mine died in a car accident and their funeral was scheduled on my birthday. As soon as I knew I told my manager what happened and that I would not be coming in. She scoffed and told me that I was just trying to get out of work for my birthday. The funeral existing wasn't enough. I had to prove that I actually went. I was on the calling in end, but I did once call in with heart failure. Had to go to the for chest palpitations. Ended up admitted 4 weeks and diagnosed with heart failure and idiopathic cardiomyopathy. My manager did not believe me when I, a normal 20 year old girl, called in with a sudden unexpected diagnosis of severe cardiac disease. When I was crew I called in 5 minutes before my opening shift and told them my back threw out and I couldn't move. Next day I hear all about how bulls it was from my general manager, told them to call my mom. Who told them about how she tried to get me onto my stomach so she could ice my back for 30 minutes at 7 in the morning. They had to take her word for it but still thought it was bulls as they had never thrown their back out. Thought I was exaggerating the pain. Less than a month later they threw out their back at work and had to be driven home. A while ago, one of my ex-co-workers didn't show up to work on a Monday because he said he was jumped. Kidnapped and put into the trunk of a car and driven two states away. He got tossed out of the car and left there. He showed us the police report. Twice happened to me. First time, I was an idiot and went tubing down a river without putting sunscreen on the bottom half of my legs. I was burned bad. I called in sick because I could not even put pants on. A co-worker, the only other person who does my job, had to work a double and was pee. I come in the next day in shorts and flip flops, totally not the dress code, but all I could wear comfortably. She said holy crap that is bad, you were not lying. Do you wanna go home? Second, I got bit by a cat and had to go to the ear as it got infected and I got all kinds of medicine. I called in and my boss was you are calling in for a cat bite, okay, whatever, and didn't sound happy. He went home to his wife, who is a nurse, and she tells him how dangerous it is. He apologized the next day. Not a manager, but one of my best friends is a manager. He mentioned how one of his employees tried to get out of work because he had an argument with his mom. Buddy apologized, confused what the heck that meant, and wrote him up. Turned out that employee's mom didn't like employee's new girlfriend, started an argument with him, and when he tried to leave she beat the crap out of him and got arrested. Almost all the women on my team came to me because another came to work in a beige miniskirt that was transparent enough to show her black underwear, which was against the company dress code. I get her out and tell her we can't have her showing that much and that she had to fix it before coming back. She came back 2 minutes later, a bright smile on her face telling me she had fixed it. She opened her purse before me, showing me her underwear in it. Armalishia's compliance. I work with bus drivers. One of is known for absenteeism on Monday after football, the European one. One day we put an alco lock on several of our cars, company policy for one of our biggest clients. One of them was his. He calls in, declaring he ate bad fruit and his alco lock gone haywire. Of course didn't believe him. Next day, he came in with a full blood work and stomach report, and a small note and an empty box of anti-alcohol tablets. Turns out he was already sober for a month. Related, but not on topic. Six months in, we asked him to speak up. Pictures of before and after were a shock to many, especially the pictures of his liver and kidneys. I was the manager of a dry cleaner store. One day I was incredibly sick, running fever and felt like vomiting all day. I call my boss, the GM, 
Told him I needed to go home cause I had a fever and was probs gonna vomit. He told me I wasn't allowed to go home. I made him come to the store to see my fever was over 100. He came over and brought a load of clean clothes and I proceeded to vomit over them and caused about $800 of cleaning to be either wrecked and or ruined cause he didn't believe me. I was allowed to go home. As an employee at a bakery, I called in sick once with a severe double ear infection, complete with hearing loss. Normally this wouldn't be a problem, but the day before I had put in my notice of resignation and told my employer I was moving to Australia. He went around bad mouthing me to other employees and didn't accept the fact I was actually sick until 2 weeks later and my hearing hadn't come back yet. A doctor's note and prescription for antibiotics hadn't convinced him. Only when he came in through the back door and scared the crap out of me when I couldn't hear him walk in. Happened to me. I'd left my homework in my locker. So my teacher let me go get it. On the way back from getting it, I see a police dog sitting. Tied up outside a bathroom obviously a policeman was inside using the facilities so i get near the dog and just said hey boy how are you doing upon me talking to the dog he barks loudly jumps up and bite snatches my homework out of my hand and just straight up eats it i'm standing there like what the frick just happened and look around just in case anyone saw that but no one was around i found the whole situation super bizarre that i couldn't help but laugh when i told my teacher and class what happened? Everyone just starts laughing and obviously my teacher doesn't believe me. In fact she called me a freaking idiot. So she gives me a detention. I had to go to security and convince them to look up the incident. And after security stopped crying with laughter I got a copy and showed my teacher. She was utterly speechless. Video or it didn't happen. Not for work and it was me but... In college I was in a sorority and we were required to go to this thing called work week which prepares us for recruitment week which was also required to go to as a member. I had a biopsy done on a tumor in my liver during most of work week so I had to miss 3 days of it. Then in the middle of recruitment week my uncle passed away. So I told them I had to leave and go to the funeral. They fined me $350 for not being at recruitment because they didn't believe me. I showed them the obituary and everything. Still nothing. I quit that sorority shortly after that. I quit sorority too. They tried to find me for missing some things when I was really sick. My doctor had written me a note excusing me. I did not pay the fines. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.